Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss lead code problem of the day and today's problem is amount of time for binary tree to be infected and it is a medium level problem. So the problem says that we have been given a binary tree with a given root and we have been given a start node. So the very first thing to note here is the start node and the root is different, right? And what we have to do is we have to find out the maximum uh, time taken to infect the whole tree. So if I like if you read the whole problem statement, you will realize it is just the maximum height starting from this particular start node, right? So in this particular case three, what is the maximum height? It is going to be one goes here. So let me just take this on the so I'm just going to take this. So as you can see, we have this particular image here. So my start node is this one, right? So what is the height starting from here? This particular uh, subtree will give me a height of 1. So let's say I have a height of 1 with me. Then this particular subtree will also give me a height of 1. Then I again have 1. Now this particular subtree is going to give me a height of 4. I have 4. So I have to take the maximum of all of them 1, 1 and 4. So how, do, how is it 4? Because 1 comes from here, then for till here it is 2, then till here it is 3 and then when we come here it is going to be 4. right? So this is how this particular problem works. Now it is easy to show it like this that we want from this particular node we want to find out the maximum height and there are actually multiple ways of solving this particular problem. One of the simplest ways if you do not uh, uh, like one of the simplest ways means one of the simplest ways to think not in the implementation but rather to think is just to reconstruct the tree with the help of this particular node or this particular node as the root node and then find out the maximum height. So I would say like this is the most simplest way of thinking that what you would do is you would reconstruct the tree. So the root will be 3 now and then it will have 3 nodes 10, 6 and 1. But again you will have to construct it like a tree which is not binary tree but the uh, now you will just have to find the height of this particular tree. So now let us say I have 5 here then I have 4 here then I have 9 and 2. So as you can see the height is 4, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Right. So, you can do it like this and just find out the height of the tree. But we are not going to solve this problem this way. Instead, I am going to discuss a very, very interesting concept here. And this concept is very useful in some advanced problems as well. So, although uh, this problem might not be of the same difficulty, you would encounter the problems with this particular concept. But this is very, very, this is a very good problem to give you a slight introduction to what I am going to talk about. So the topic or the concept I am going to talk about is tree rerouting DP, right? So DP is just again a fancy term to add here, but it is called like this. That is why I am saying. So basically, it is tree rerouting. So what is tree rerouting? As I have discussed, as I have discussed it just now, that you can construct the whole tree with the help of this particular node as a root, right? So rerouting is the same thing. You want to change the root. But you would not want to construct the whole tree again. So this pro this approach of constructing the whole tree will definitely work here because this there is only one node you want to find the answer for. But let's say if the problem was you want to find out the answer for each node at the start as the start node. So for this node as the start node, what is the answer for this node as the start node? What is the answer for this node as the start node? What is the answer? So if the problem says like this, for every node you have to find out the answer, then this particular approach will not work because if there are n nodes, you will have to construct n trees and that is definitely not possible. So tree rewriting DP is basically something which helps us to find out the answer if the root was changed without altering the original tree, right? So this is what we actually do. Now before uh, we have like before talking about the actual part, we have to do some pre-computation. So in this particular case, we are going to find out the height of the height of each of the nodes. So for this particular node, it is 0, for this particular node, it is 0 and this node is 1, this node is 2, this node is 3, this node is 1, this is 0, this is 0. So you see, I have initially found out the heights of each of these nodes with respect to this particular node as the root node. I am assuming that this is the initial root node. So in tree view routing, you can consider any one of the nodes as the root node and then start your first DFS from there. So in the first traversal, we have figured out what is the uh, like height of the each subtree considering this particular node is the root node, right? So you have to make an assumption, you are free to choose any node, 
but since we are given this particular node as the root node we are going to take this only now we are going to start our second dfs uh, but remember whatever node you took in the first dfs as the root node you have to take the same node as the root in the second dfs so let us see what we are going to do in the second dfs so let's say this particular problem i would say uh, just like dp don't think about tree rooting tree tree rooting itself just think about the current transition and then it will be much much easier to solve right so let's see what we can do let's say i want to make this particular node as my root node right i am currently at the one node i want to make node 5 is the root node so if this becomes root node what could be the maximum height one option is the current height itself which is which comes from here right and the second option the new option which have been generated after making this node as the new node new root node is the second option from here that comes from this particular path right so this option we have already calculated that is 2 itself right we have not calculated this particular option right so how do we actually calculate it let us figure out so when i am making my transition from this particular node to this particular node i know that this is going to be my left child so what i what i am am i going to do here is i am going to take the height of the right child that means this particular right child this particular right child has a height of 1 right so from this particular right child if i want to reach my current root node i will take 1 plus 1 that is 2 cost or 2 height now let's say from this subtree if i consider a subtree like this from starting from here and then here this is my subtree the height of this subtree now becomes 2 why what i am saying is i want to make this particular node as root node that is fine so what i do i consider the other node so there is there are two nodes one is the left child one is the right child if i want to make one of them as the root node i consider the other of them right i find out the height of this particular second node which is one in this particular case now if you realize if you like visualize this as a subtree what will be the height of this particular subtree you should see that it is one which is this one plus this particular edge that is two right so now you see if i consider this particular node as a subtree the height is going to be two right now i have to consider this edge also if i want to go from here to here so i have to take this particular two plus one so when i come to this particular node the total height will be 3 right so you see how seamlessly i am trying to make a transition first of all i figured out that okay i want to make this particular node as the root node so i figured out that the other node that i have has a current height equals to 1 right now if i include this particular edge which connects 1 and 3 this this particular edge will make the height of this particular subtree equals to 2 right now since this subtree has height equals to true to now if i want to attach this particular subtree with the help of this particular edge to this new node new root then the total height of the subtree will be equals to 3 right so but you have to realize that this original 3 which was here and this new 3 which we have created is same on value but they are actually derived in a very different manner so this particular subtree will give this particular new node a height of 2 and this new subtree that i have just formed will give the new root node a height of 3 if i take the maximum of both of them the height will be 3 as I, and as you can clearly see the height is indeed 3 maximum height 1 2 and 3 right so you see it is just about making the transitions now when i come to this particular node i will also store the information that the previous node the node from here gave this node a height of 3 right so whenever i am passing my height further i have to take care of this particular 3 as well right now let us move on to the other half let us calculate for the other half so the height was 1 here it was 1 here 2 here and 3 here so now i am going to just do the exact opposite now i want to make this particular node as the root node so what i will do i will find out the height of this left node since i am making the right node as root node i am going to find out the height of the left node from this left node i am going to add 1 to it why because 1 will be the cost of reaching from here to here right so the total cost of reaching this particular node has become 3 right so if the cost of th this node or the height of this subtree in other words of this particular subtree is now 3 
what should be the height of this particular subtree. It should be 3 plus this particular edge that is 3 plus 1 and that is 4. So now I have 3 different options. One, let us say I am just going to change the pen. So one height came from here, the other one from here, one from here and the other height came from here. So the height that has come from the previous node is 4, the height that comes from this particular node is 1 and the height that comes from this particular node is 1 as well. So the maximum of 4, 1, 1 is 4 itself and the answer for this particular node is 4. Right. So this is how you can figure out your answers. But now let us say, now let us extend this particular case a little bit further. You can clearly see that the answer was 4 here as well. Now let us say instead of making 3 as the root node, I want to make 6 as the root node. So now let us see what will happen. So let me erase this lines. Now for this particular node, the height from the previous node is coming out to be 4, right. Now I want to make the right child, right child as the new root node. So what I will do, I will figure out the height contributed by the left child. So this left child has height 0. So the cost of reaching from this particular 0 node to this particular 3 node is going to be 1, right. So that means this particular left node contributes 1 into 2, right. Similarly, if the cost of reaching this particular node is 1 and the previous cost is 4, right. So 4 comes from here, 1 comes from here, I will have to take the maximum of both of them. So 4, 1 is 4 itself and then when I move from this particular node to this particular node, I will have to add 1 to it. So when I add 1 to it for this particular edge, for the edge in between, I will add 1 to it. So 4 plus 1 will be equal to 5. So for this particular node, I have to take the maximum, its current height is 0, so I have to take the maximum of 5 comma 0, that is in like indeed 5. So you will see that the height of this particular 3 starting from this particular node will be equal to 5. So you can see 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So you see this is how we are passing the values and we are trying to switch the root nodes from one node to another, right. So it is just about taking the previous subtree into consideration. So basically. I am taking this particular subtree and assuming that this was not the parent but indeed a different child, right. So let us say 1 was written here, right. I am considering this particular case like this. So to make it a case like this, what are the additional number of edges that I have to add? This is the only thing I want to calculate here, right. So if you are having some hard time understanding this particular problem, it is actually fine. I would say this is uh, an, like uh, a problem on the upper range of the medium difficulty of problems. So that is it. If there are some other easier methods as well, then this problem might become easier. But I wanted to discuss this method because this is very, very important and super useful in certain problems. So this is a good topic to know. That is why I discussed. Right. Now, uh, what I have done essentially is I have initialized my, uh, my answer with 0. I have initialized my height map with uh, like, so this first part is tree node and the second part is integer. So for each node, I will have the height. This is what I wanted to achieve with this particular map. Now I, I have initialized the height of null pointer with 0. So what I do in during my first DFS, well, as you can see, I am starting my first DFS starting from the root node. If my node is not uh, is equal to null pointer, I am going to return minus 1. Otherwise, I am going to get the height of the left subtree from DFS 1 of node left. I am going to get the height of the right subtree and I am going to set the height of my current node as maximum of left comma right plus 1. Right. Now during my DFS 2, it receives two parameters that is the current node and the previous value. Right. The previous value will be basically, for example, for this particular node 3, my previous node is this one. So the previous value will give me the answer of what happens if this particular node instead of being the parent becomes the child of this particular node and what will be the value or the height contributed by this particular node. So this is what I am actually storing in previous value. So now what I do? I have uh, like if my current node is equals to start, if the current node has the value equals to start, I just set my answer as maximum of previous and the uh, initial height that it had, right. And I just return from here. If it is not equal to the start value, what I am going to do, I am going to find out the height contributed by the left subtree. So if the left node is null pointer, I am going to mark it as 0. If it is not equal to the null pointer, I am going to take its height and add 1 to it, right. So you see why I am adding 1? Because if let us say I am at this particular node, I want to find out the height contributed by this particular node. So I take the height of this node and this particular edge. So 
to come from here to here right so this edge has to be considered that is why i am adding one but if there are no nodes for example this particular node there are no nodes to the left and to the right so the value contributed by them will be zero so that is exactly what i am doing here if node dot left is not null pointer i am going to take height of node left plus one otherwise i am going to take zero similarly for node right and what i do i call the dfs on both of the left and the right halves respectively so for the left half i am taking maximum of previous height that i got as well as the right the height of the right septal and i am adding one to it why because now i have figured out that this particular node can give me a height of 3 but when i go from this node to this particular node as the new root node i have to consider this edge as well so that is why i add one to it right so this is what i am doing when i go to the left septal i pass maximum of previous comma right otherwise i pass maximum of previous comma left and both the cases i add one to it now for the root node as you can see the height of the previous will be equal to zero because there are no previous nodes at the end i can just return my answer and this will be my final solution so let me just quickly submit this and show you how this particular code works and as you can see i made a couple of wrong submissions so i don't know what i uh, like uh, i was writing but i was completely writing it wrong i was making some implementation mistakes that is why i got a couple of wrong answers but this final code is definitely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution and you guys were able to learn something very new. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this video really, really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye-bye.